If you ask somebody what they thought the hardest COD Zombies easter egg was of all time, you would probably get a lot of different answers. One common answer that you'll see a lot is Blood of the Dead from Black Ops 4, and I will admit that easter egg is very complicated and often takes like up to 3 hours to complete. But a lot of people don't even acknowledge the existence of other games not by Treyarch like World War 2 for example. Now this game was definitely not very well received overall, but one thing it is known for is how brutal the easter eggs are, especially on Solo. On the first map, the final right, the easter egg was actually very easy and it literally guided you through the entire thing. But at the start of the DLC cycle, this took a massive turn and in my opinion, I think the hardest easter egg is the darkest shore. I originally tried to complete this many times a couple years ago, but today I'm back and I'm finally gonna finish this once and for all, hopefully. This map has a super odd start because you actually start on round 0 rather than 1 and there's a full horde of zombies that just comes out the ocean. Now that might sound great because you get a whole ton of points before the game even really starts, but the only thing is, is that these zombies only give you 5 points. Because these zombies don't give you any points, I ended up just staying in the spawn room until about the end of round 3 to actually get the points I need to open a lot of the doors. I also made sure to buy this game's version of Juggernaut, which is the armor, but I do have to buy this semi-sparingly because, as most of you may know, it just keeps going up in price and eventually reaches 10,000 points per purchase. After that, I continued on to the underground part of the island, which is where the power is located. There was a ton of zombies down here, so I activated my free fire ability with the 1911 and was able to rack up a ton of points before the round ended. When I left the underground section of the map, the fog came in and this is honestly one of the most terrifying parts about this map. Now other maps like D Machina had fog that rolled in and that might have been kind of obstructive to your vision, but this is just on a whole nother level. The reason the fog is so intense is because of how the super overpowered boss zombie works on this map, and trust me we'll be fighting a ton of those later on. Luckily the boss zombie doesn't spawn on this low of a round, so I was able to just easily kill the zombies until the fog eventually went away, and then I was also able to turn on the second power switch to this map. And just like that, the entire map is literally already open on round 6, but trust me there's still a ton of steps we have to do to progress. The first of which, and probably the most important, is to grab the saw handle as well as the saw blade. While I was doing this, I was also sure to pick up the first radio part, which we will need for later. And just like that, we can already build the saw, but we aren't done yet because we have to get a charged zombie spine by charging the zombies and taking their spine out, which is pretty gruesome, and then we have to put it in the table and charge it with zombie souls. As you can tell, there's a whole lot of charging in this map, but after about 20 zombie kills, we finally upgraded the saw to the rip saw, and now we can actually shoot the blade out the front, which we're going to need to do some easter egg steps. The first of which is actually right outside where we got the rip saw from, and we're going to have to shoot this head off and grab it for later. But we're just going to store that in our inventory for now because my next priority is to unlock the uber spren gun. All you have to do to unlock this is just ride the minecart and grab each one of these little green devices from every pathway that you can go. While I was doing this I was also sure to blow up a bomber zombie in this specific spot so that we could open up a secret door. All we need in here for now is just the monk head but we're going to be coming back in this room a lot more later. I finally inserted the last little green device to unlock the Pack-a-Punch with the Uber Spren Gun, and I Pack-a-Punch my 1911 instantly because they're actually super overpowered in this game. And it's probably not for the reason you expect because it doesn't actually do a ton of damage or anything, but the only thing about it is, is you can actually buy ammo for it at the Pack-a-Punch machine. Because you can essentially always get more ammo, you can basically just spam these pistols. This is actually super helpful for the next easter egg step, which is attaching this head to this gate and then charging a few zombie souls into it. After you eventually kill enough zombies next to the door, you actually revive the guy that was previously on the gate. This will alert somebody named Dr. Straub that you're on the island and he'll start making flames come out of the floor and there'll also be a ton of zombies that spawn in. We have to protect ourselves until the flames eventually distinguish under all three of the valves which we then have to turn and once we turn all three of them, we're finally done with the step. Unfortunately for this guy, we have to get through the gate that he is chained up to. He's just a sacrifice that has to be made to be able to actually complete this easter egg. Once the gate fully opens, a Brenner zombie will fall from the sky, and unfortunately in my game, I had to deal with the boss of this map and the Brenner zombie at the same time. But that wasn't too bad because like I said earlier, I was just able to spam my 1911s at them and they died pretty quickly. However, this step is not entirely over just yet because now that Dr. Straub knows that we're on his island, he sent out planes to come and kill us. Our job is now to get on one of the two flat cannons around the map and shoot every single one of the planes down, but the only thing about the step that's very annoying on solo is that the zombies can actually come up and hit you from the back while you're trying to do the step. If you really want to, you also don't have to shoot them down right away, but I would definitely recommend it because they can be extremely deadly as I figured out right here. Looking back on it, it probably wasn't the smartest thing to just run through the plane's bullets, but I thought I would be fine with full armor. 
other than that down i got pretty lucky doing this step because i was able to shoot down all the planes on a pest round where the zombies didn't really do much damage to the cannon i was on now that we shot the planes down one of them crashed into this mountain and it's actually how we get the second radio part with both the parts collected, we're able to assemble the radio next to the mystery box, but what that's going to do is a bunch of ships are going to come and start shooting cannons onto the map. Just like the planes that we shot down before, we need to watch out for these cannons, but at least they don't do as much damage as the planes did. But these ships will just infinitely shoot their cannons at the island if we don't deal with them, so we're going to go to the gate we opened earlier and summon the artillery loader. I would be lying if I said this was the first time I summoned him though, because that time he just got absolutely destroyed by this bomber zombie. The second time I brought him in, it was close because his health did get into the red, but I managed to escort him all the way to the artillery cannon. All he did though was bring the battery into the artillery cannon, so now we have to actually charge it by killing zombies near it. Right as the battery was fully charged and I was ready to start shooting at the ships, the fog rolled in which is terrible because you have to actually aim the cannon to be able to take down the ships. So here I am just running around in the fog, training the zombies up, waiting for the fog to go away so I can just actually do the step. After a few minutes, the fog went away, and as it did, I realized I actually hit one of the ships just completely covered in the fog. All I did was angle the cannon left one time and then fire, and I guess I got lucky enough to hit it. Now, there was only one ship left, and I managed to hit this one pretty easily with just a little bit of trial and error. Now that we've done all that, this is the point where I would say the easter egg starts to get pretty hard. But I'm not even sure if that's a good word for this step, because this step is just flat out annoying, honestly. You have to run around the entire map looking on these ledges for these little rocks poking out and you have to shoot them with your ripsaw and it just so happens that there's like maybe 20 spawns around the map of these things and only one of them has a little statue that we need. I spent the next 15 minutes literally just walking around shooting random rocks on cliff edges and things like that until I eventually found the statue. Turns out though that this is just one of three of these little statues that we have to find but the other ones are a lot easier to actually get. So easy in fact that I literally already got the second one on complete accident by shooting this rock while I was taking out the planes. I only realized this when I was running down to the beach with the first statue and then I saw the second one on the ground. But you might even notice that there's already two statues on the ground right there so I literally already have all of them. That's because earlier on in this game I harvested a regular zombie spine that was charged and then put it into this bucket. What that's going to do is summon a friendly zombie that you have to be very careful not to kill and he's going to go all the way down to the beach and come out of the water with the very last statue. Now that we have all of the statues, we need to take each and every single one of them on the minecart and put them into the door on the secret room. Then the door will slowly open and you'll see three of this map's bosses just kind of sitting on the ground and they'll instantly start chasing after you. These bosses are absolute tanks, which is the main reason I selected Free Fire as my perk so that I can just activate it and just spam my weapons and not lose any ammo. I made sure not to kill one of them though because we're actually going to need to kill this guy with the rip saw and harvest his spine for the next step. After just hitting him with the saw over and over again for like 30 seconds, I eventually killed him and I did get a charged spine, which is actually somewhat rare. Then I brought his spine down to the bucket that we put the regular zombie spine in earlier and we're actually going to need to get one of each type of zombie spine in there. For the spine we just did though, it's going to spawn a friendly Mewkler which will instantly run off into the nearest zombie spawn and we'll have to actually look around for this guy in the fog and he's going to be kind of getting attacked by zombies and just sitting on the ground crying. You just have to shoot him when he's on the ground and then he'll run off and find another location to hide in and you have to repeat this about like 4 times. But you can very easily fail this step because if the zombies just get a few too many hits on him then he will eventually die and you'll have to get another spine and just completely restart everything. So the way you can get to him before the zombies kill him is listen out to a sound effect like this. Once you hear that you should know the general sound effect to head in and then you can just find him, shoot him, and just overall repeat the process. After all the fog goes away and he's not there anymore, you need to head back to the secret room and you're actually going to see him in there and he's going to do his crying thing again and you have to actually kill him this time. He's going to start chasing after you and he has an insane amount of HP so I just laid into him with my upgraded pistols and my free fire and he eventually did die. Now that that's all done, it's time to move on to the next spine type which is the Wustling Spine. Just like before, we're going to bring it down to the bucket and put it in there and it's going to bring up a friendly Wustling. This step is a lot different from a lot of the other steps because what we have to do is bring this guy around the entire map and get him certain perks in a certain order. This was easily my least favorite step in the entire easter egg before I understood how you do it. This is a clip of me attempting to do this easter egg years ago and as you can see the Wustling just does not want to follow me and he heads straight for Speed Cola which is a perk he can't get or else you fail the step. I was trying this for so long so when he did this I literally just quit the match because I was so tired of it. 
But now I know that all you have to do is just shoot him and he'll instantly turn around from wherever he's going and start following you again. Now that I knew this trick, this step went from being one of the hardest to one of the easiest and I could actually finally complete it. I brought him to his last perk which is quick revive and then once he gets that he'll have all four of his perks and he'll run into this nearby waterfall. And just like we did with the Mucler zombie, we now have to head back into the hidden room and a bunch of whistlings will start spawning in. They're going to be super strong and there's going to be four of them this time, but it really isn't too bad compared to the last one which was the Mucler zombie. And now after all that, there is just one more zombie type to go and that is the pest zombie. I of course dropped the spine in the bucket and it brought up a friendly pest zombie. This guy is literally just going to dilly dally around the place and stop in different locations and our job is to bounce a rip saw off of the fuse boxes in different spots and hit him with it. You'll know if you did it correctly because when he gets hit with it, he'll kind of like pulsate with a bunch of energy and he'll start running a different route than he normally does. This can get pretty tricky in some places because one saw will need to bounce off like four different fuse boxes and into him. But the worst of it all is the downstairs location, but there is a lineup to make it really easy and that's when his health bar passes that little line in the wall, then you turn around and shoot that fuse box and it should hit him with it every time. I actually got really lucky and completed most of these on my very first try, which is definitely not what happened when I last attempted this easter egg. As always, I just headed back to the secret room and a ton of pest zombies started falling out the ceiling, of course stronger like they always are, but they really weren't any problem, this was probably the easiest one that we've done so far. But now that we've done every single zombie type there is, we can place their skulls on these hooks in this room and the door will begin to close. Now we have to stay in here for the longest time we ever have with just everything running at us from different boss zombies and just a whole ton of regular zombies and it's actually pretty tricky. The upgraded starting pistols were amazing for this lockdown because if you kinda just shot them in the middle of the room, most of the things in there would at least get stunned but you still were at risk of like boss zombies running at you. After about a minute, the door started sliding open and the zombies kind of slowed down on spawning and were able to grab the pummel of Barbarossa from the statue. This is kind of like a second grenade where there's an initial shockwave and then after a bit of time there's a second one, but you can just keep on kind of spamming these things because they recharge every about 5 seconds. We also use them to get into the boss fight because we need to throw them at this radio and then you can just go in at any time. As soon as you enter, you'll be met with this horrifying sight of three super strong boss zombies that can fire saw blades and also have pummel-like effects where they kind of create a shockwave. Not to mention there's fog all over the place and you can barely see as they're like sneaking out and hitting you and it's just super dangerous and kind of scary. I tried to use my pummel as much as I could as well as the upgraded starting pistol with free fire but holy do these guys have a ton of HP and they can literally one tap your shields. I managed to complete the first stage of the boss fight, but there's four more to go and literally all my armor was already gone. But there was literally nothing I can do but continue on and hope for the best, so I rode the minecart to the second stage of the boss fight. If I'm being completely honest, this is the most terrible, just completely unbalanced boss fight I've ever done in my entire life, because as soon as you get there, there's a Brenner zombie that spawns in and just instantly lights you on fire. And that's nothing compared to the flames that always pop out of the ground, well there's three different boss zombies on you, a Brenner zombie with a flamethrower, and they can literally one tap you with their saw blades. I went down four times in this stage of the boss fight using one quick revive as well as two self revives which you get out of care packages and I still died and the game was over. Not gonna lie, at this point I thought that was just it and I was totally done with this map and I thought the video would just end on a sad note but I went in the next day after a night's rest and I decided to give it one more try. And after doing the entire easter egg all over again it was time to start the boss fight.
And just like that, after multiple tries, I was finally able to complete what I think is the hardest easter egg in all of COD Zombies. I never really had trouble in a Zombies easter egg like this and was successfully able to one attempt the Blood of the Dead easter egg as well as the Guard Crowvy one, but this one just felt like it was more difficult to me. But anyway, that is going to be this video and if you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you all later.